Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I've not typically done product reviews on this channel, but I was contacted by Andenstar. They make digital microscopes, and they asked me if I would do a video on one of them. And since I've been doing a lot more surface mount stuff, I've been actually thinking about a digital microscope to make it a little bit easier. Up until now, I use one of these. This is just a, a little headset uh, magnifier that you can put down. And this works pretty well. The magnification's really good. The trouble with it is, is that you have to keep your head tilted at just the right angle and you have to be just the right distance from whatever it is you're working on in order for it to be in focus and to see the right things. So I thought a digital microscope might make my work position a little bit easier. So I replied to Andenstar and I told them I would do a video, but I would be giving my honest opinion, good or bad, about the product. They provided me with one, so let's take a look. Let's open up the box and see what we have. So we have a user's manual. We'll take a look at that in a minute and nice foam padding on the top so it's packed reasonably well we'll set that aside and then this looks like the main part of the scope with the light source we'll set that aside for the moment and take the rest of the pieces of foam out we have a little Phillips screwdriver, I assume to help with assembling it. A remote control. Not really sure, I think that's terribly useful, but we have it. An HDMI cable comes with it. This has a USB cable to micro USB and a power source, and this looks like controls for the lights. Let's see what else we have here. Not sure. Oh, this is a looks like a slide holder and it's got a bottom light source for using the microscope part with slides. I probably will not be playing with that too much. These are a bunch of sample slides. I know they talked about that. Pine stem, it says, so these are all labeled with sample things to look at. This looks like a specimen holder, probably for putting an insect in. USB wall wart. Some miscellaneous hardware and an Allen wrench. Oh, and a micro SD card. A 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. So you've got something to store the pictures on. And we have the base with a couple LED light sources, another USB to micro USB cable, and then let's move this out of the way. And then this looks like the, the tower, the vertical part to hold it up. So, let's go see if we can get this all assembled. I guess we can actually take a look at the manual. I'll have some better pictures of this, hopefully, that you can look at. Video resolution, 2880 by 2160, so that's actually 4K. MP4, 120 frames per second, so you can do slow motion with it. And here's a picture of all the parts. So we've got the base, we've got the metal column, the remote, some screws, the actual microscope, this gets assembled on the base, it looks like part of it's actually already assembled, locking ring, all right, in true amateur radio form, we're not going to spend a lot of time looking at the manual, unless we absolutely have to. We'll pull this stuff off the base. And these look like they go down like that. 
this has the little jack for the power source for those and it showed the locking ring for this so this appears to actually thread in which is good because I don't think it would have been all that secure if it slipped in okay so we're gonna back it up oh well that's interesting I'm not sure how you ah you know, I bet if I read the instructions more carefully, I would have avoided this. Because I think what I need to do is leave the locking ring threaded on there. And then that screws into that base block. And then, yep, so we have to stop there. And now we turn the locking ring against the base to hold that. It's reasonably secure. I wouldn't call it ultra secure, but that's pretty firm. Let me go unpack the other part and I will be right back. All right, I wanted to get you a little better view here from another angle and truth in advertising I did actually crack open the manual to see a few more things this cable that had the little control buttons on it is the main power cable that plugs into the adapter which I've already plugged in and then it has separate cables that go to power the lights on the base and also to power the microscope and we've got the SD card slot here. We'll put that in in a minute, but first we're going to just put this on the base and there's a little slip ring here. We got to take the screws all the way out and then that should just slide in. It actually didn't seem like it was going to be that sturdy, but yeah, this is pretty pretty rigid. I think certainly suitable enough for what we're going to be doing here. Okay, let's put the SD card in because maybe we'll use that to take a few pictures or video to show you. Um, not obvious which direction it needs to go. And I think not that direction. There we go. And then we will plug the USB cable in with the micro connector there. They don't seem to have any cable management. I'm not sure that's really a big deal. And then we'll plug that in for the lights. And I guess we've already got lights. And I am peeling off the little warning thing. The display on this device is very fragile. Please use with care. Do not drop, press hard, or touch the display with sharp objects. The display is not waterproof. Please clean it with dry and soft material. Do not press the display when installing the battery or adjusting the angle of the display. I don't think there's a battery here, but that's probably a universal sticker for that display. And when I first turn this on, I have just a little movie camera picture and what looks like a clock that probably needs to be set. And I'll try to get you some direct video of this. Okay, we have movie. All right, 
I think I'm recording video, so hopefully if I've done this right, you're going to be seeing some actual video of the circuit here. So we have a focus ring to adjust the focus, and we can see the whole board sliding it around. If we flip it over, there's not much to see on the bottom of this one, I'm afraid. But one of the things that's nice is I think I can read everything on the top of that SCR. Now, let's try lowering this down to get it closer and see how the focus comes out. Oh yeah, there we go. And let me adjust these lights a little better. So we get some of the shadows out of the way. I would say that this is going to be very nice for helping with placing and soldering surface mount parts. And I'm not sure, <laughs> well look at the screwdriver under the microscope, here's the screwdriver that they included which I can use for pointing at things here. I'm not sure what I'm going to use the screwdriver for because I don't think we need it for anything, although perhaps that's needed for this piece for the slides. So I'm not going to be using this for looking at slides and things, but we'll give that a try here just to See, and I think the way this works, it looks like I'm going to unplug the power cord from the lights on the base. Whoop, I knocked the camera, sorry. I think for this to actually work, we need to get really close. And then let's see if we can... Oh yeah, look at that. I'd say that's pretty good. It says this is a pine stem. I'm guessing this is a cross section of it. So let's see if we can get even closer. Refocus. Well, I gotta say, this is pretty cool. Let me let go of that so you don't see my hand shaking everything. So there's the pine stem slide. I'm not going to go through all the other slides. There's a whole bunch of slides in here. It's epiderma of epidermia of an onion. Well, you always got to look at an onion under a microscope. Anyway, that's the pine stem. So just for grins, let me go back up. Let's just look a little more closely at our circuit board. All right. There is, with the scope, about as close as I can go without hitting the fuse holder. But that's actually pretty good for inspecting solder joints. You can see all the dust that I have on this board. I guess I don't have a very clean board, and if I wanted, if I was having any difficulty reading that SCR lettering. I'm not going to have any difficulty reading it now. 
and we can inspect those solder joints and look at the solder joint for our LED well overall I would have to say this is a very good product for what it does at least for what I'm going to need it for for working on surface mount components and working on small items and maybe videoing some of that stuff to do videos for you folks as I'm looking at small things I have to say this is very cool let's uh, get that back up a little higher so we can look around the whole board move that out of the shadow this is going to be a very useful device and as I've been doing this by the time you see this hopefully you'll be seeing some of the video that has come directly off the camera off the SD card I have not tested plugging the HDMI cable in and hooking it up to a monitor it does have right up here on the top it's got an HDMI port and I wonder if the menu things if you'll be able to see those so let me try stopping that video alright I was trying to see if I could get a way to video the menu and I couldn't do that so this is the display and I have to say the display is actually quite good it's very high resolution very easy to see so with an HDMI you could have even a larger display if you use that cable I could not video getting into the menus though so if you press and hold the menu button it brings up the menu here which allows you to go through a bunch of options I haven't bothered to set the clock on this yet so if we go to resolution we have the and I, and I was doing 60 frames per second so you could see this in ultra slow motion I probably should have checked that before I just started recording but let's set it to 30 frames per second and then exposure so you can adjust the exposure up and down date stamp that probably puts it on the video or on the picture we're gonna leave that off for the moment sharpness um, I don't know it looks pretty sharp to me I'm not sure I saw any difference at least on this display screen it might make some difference when you're recording and then let's see freeze that's probably for doing a freeze frame I guess I'm gonna have to read the manual to understand what that is contrast color those are all fairly self-explanatory I think well there you have it all in all for my usage I'd say this is pretty cool this is going to work out very nicely for working on small parts examining solder joints maybe examining tiny connectors on things I really like the lighting on this because it's got the two lights here on the back that you can position as close as you want and you can adjust them to get the glare off plus it's also got the light built into the scope and if I just take those away entirely just the light that's built in under the lens here is actually lighting this up pretty well and I haven't even tried playing with the remote looks like that gives you some of the menu adjustments maybe some of the things I was trying to do would have been easier with that I'll get around to playing with that but if you want to use the menu instead of the buttons on the excuse me the remote instead of the buttons on the front um, you can certainly do that oh and look at that there is a display brightness adjustment here as well that I just discovered right on the front of it so all in all the Anden Star digital microscope I would say works pretty well well there you have it all in all 
I think it's actually a pretty good product. The fact that it does 4K resolution uh, is really nice, and just the 7.5 inch screen that's built into the unit looks pretty good. And as you saw during the video, the videos come out pretty good as well. Now, I only recorded those videos in 1080p because I wasn't doing this video in 4K, so I haven't really explored the 4K to see how much better that is, but frankly, they were pretty good just the way they were. A couple of other things that I discovered after I shot the video, I mentioned that I probably wouldn't find the remote very useful. Um, that's actually not true. <laughs> There's a few functions that the remote does that you either cannot access from the screen, from the buttons on the screen, or it's at least difficult. You gotta go through some menus. So on the remote, there are buttons to invert the image, to flip it upside down. So if you've got something turned around the wrong way and you wanna just be able to read numbers or letters or whatever, there's a, a flip function on here. There is also a negative positive function, which turns the image to a negative. And that's actually kind of handy if you're trying to see something. Uh, you can, you're seeing this here where I've given you an example with that board. Sometimes if you're trying to see something, inverting the image to a negative can make it easier to spot things. And you can also change the brightness and you can zoom in and out with a digital zoom on this. So I am gonna probably end up using the remote, not really because I like the remote, but they put some functions on here that you can't easily access from the front. Another thing I discovered in the manual is that you can connect the microscope to a laptop via USB. That's probably what that extra USB cable is for that came with it. And there's a piece of Windows software. It didn't say anything about Mac or Linux, but Windows only right now, that will operate the scope. You can see the video on your laptop and access most of the controls for the scope. But one of the really cool features is it looks like you can actually calibrate the window that you're looking at with a steel rule or something like that. And then you can actually measure distances. You can measure, I think they had the radius or circumference of a circle. You could measure a bunch of different things on the screen using this software after you've calibrated the view with some sort of a calibrated device. So that was pretty cool. Again, I haven't played with it, but it looked like it would be pretty useful. Anyway, overall, I'd say it's a pretty good product. I'm gonna be definitely using it when I'm doing surface mount. It's, uh, it's gonna be easier than this. So for me, it's a win. There's a link in the description if you wanna buy one or you're interested in one. And of course, there's the links to the channel website. And as I always say, if you found this video useful, I would appreciate a click on that like button. And if you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.